You are muted. Ah, thanks, Meta. Sorry. Um, I've started the recording. Okay, let's just start now. Uh, welcome, everyone, for an, on a, to another week of the ICTS String Seminar. Today, we have uh, Sunny Itzaki uh, from Tel Aviv University. Uh, he's going to speak on a puncture in the Euclidean black hole. Uh, over to you, Sunny. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yes, indeed, I'll uh, talk about a puncture in the Euclidean uh, black hole. And this is based on a work that we are finishing with uh, Rami Bunstein, uh, Amit Givon, and the other Zigon. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so uh, um, well, historically, uh, thinking about uh, the cigar geometry, you know, the geometry that we get when we analytically continue the, um, the eternal black hole. Uh, is was you know it was proven to be a, a good thing to do so several things that uh, we've learned um, you know back in the 70s and um, just uh, you know this uh, this bunch of works and more recently um, you know people derive the um, the page curve using um, uh, approach like this. Um, so uh, in string theory, uh, um, the situation is a bit uh, more um, uh, interesting because once we have a cigar, then it is uh, compiled by a, a winding mode. And uh, once uh, uh, you realize that, then there are two uh, questions that uh, um, we would like to address is first of all, um, what is so the first question is already at the cigar uh, and it is the second one here uh, what is the effect of the winding mode on the cigar uh, the first question here is you know uh, what does the winding mode means when we we rotate back to the uh, actual black hole which is the thing that we uh, really care about so uh, in this talk, I'll address uh, both of these questions. I'll start with the, uh, with the second one. Um, so uh, if you think about a generic black hole, um, for example, you know, a Schwarzschild black hole, then it is uh, very uh, difficult to answer this question precisely. And the reason is simple. Uh, the only thing that we know for sure is that if we think about the wave function of this uh, winding mode, when we go far, far away from the tip, then uh, um, it looks something like that. Uh, well, there is some constant times e to the minus the uh, Nambu go to action of a string that goes all the way uh, to a certain point. Um, but um, if I think about Walter Black Hole, I can't even fix uh, this constant, so uh, so for sure I cannot uh, uh, try to um, you know understand what uh, what will be the effect of such a configuration on the on the geometry. Uh, and this is where um, the exact um, CFD description of the uh, SL2 modded by U1 cigar becomes very uh, useful. Uh, in this setup, we can fix uh, this number, and we can actually try and, uh, and address these questions uh, in a much more uh, controlled uh, fashion. Um, so uh, for this reason, uh, in this talk, um, I'll focus on, on this case. Um, and basically, I'll have nothing uh, concrete to say about other black holes. So um, this is uh, definitely uh, not ideal. So I have uh, I cannot say anything about Schwarzschild. But uh, one thing that uh, you should keep in mind is that um, this uh, two-dimensional uh, um, black hole is the near horizon limit of k. Uh, extremal, uh, near extremal um, NS5 brains. So this is a black hole that does appear in type to be uh, in 10 dimensional uh, type to be a string theory. So this is, uh, so if we can say something about this, then well, it's not Schwarzschild, but still it's interesting 
um, you, know, you know, at least uh, in my opinion. Okay, so uh, the starting point for the uh, discussion here will be the Orovitz-Polchinski action. So I, the details are not uh, too important here. Um, the, the, the only thing that uh, um, you should uh, uh, take from this is that there is an action. So this is the winding mode. It's, um, you know, it's, you have a standard kinetic term here and it's two dimensional because we focus on this uh, SL2 modeled by U1 and um, black hole. So it's a very uh, concrete uh, action. And what we would like to do is to uh, consider that action when K, when K is large. When K is large, it means that the black hole uh, temperature is much, much smaller than the eigenvalue temperature. Okay, and this is what we are uh, going to do in this talk. And immediately you should uh, uh, think to yourself is that this sounds like a very bad idea. Um, and there are, uh, well, at least two ways to convince yourself that this is not something that you would normally like to do. Uh, so the only reason why, so, so we, we should justify why we are using this uh, action and I will use it. I will solve the equation of motions and do a uh, um, very uh, detailed uh, analysis of that action. So I should justify why, uh, why is it okay uh, to use it despite the fact that K is large. So here are the reasons why this is not a good idea. So first of all, when K is large or when the temperature is much uh, smaller than the uh, eigenvalue temperature, then uh, there is no reason why I should focus only uh, the winding one states, you know, chi, uh, chi and chi star plus, plus minus one. Um, when we are near, so normally, people like to use this action when beta is very close to beta age. In that case, chi is loud, is, is, is light everywhere. And you know, higher modes are massive and it makes sense to ignore them. Um, and this is definitely not the case when k is large. Uh, moreover, if I, for some reason, choose to focus only on a W, which is plus or minus one, then if you look on the profile of such, uh, of such a solution, because when, when the uh, temperature is very small, it's very massive at infinity, what happens is that there are, the, 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 the derivative is very large and why should I stop here? Why not include higher derivatives? So, um, and in general, there could be higher winding, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so this is what I said here. So higher winding modes will be important. You you would think that they are important when you take such a limit. Well, if you decide to work with W that is one, then why not two or three? when beta is much larger than beta H. Th these are the two complaints. Now, uh, if I were uh, to do this in a Schwarzschild black hole, then I don't really, then, then I have nothing to say about that. But uh, since we are working with the SL2 modded by U1, then basically the answer to both of these uh, concerns is the FZZ duality. Um, so the FZZ duality is telling us that the sky with winding uh, number one and the zero mode of the uh, gravity modes, which is shifting the location of the uh, tip of the cigar, are uh, two semi-classical states of the exact state in the CFT. So it's not consistent to keep this guy without keeping that guy. And this is correct only for winding equal, winding, uh, uh, winding one states. So this is uh, one thing, this is why 
uh, it makes sense to keep only this without keeping higher winding. Uh, a different way to say it is that um, is that the winding uh, one state is by itself it is a zero mode uh, two. It's just that it is the the partner of the zero mode, which is associated with shifting the location of the tip. Um, now, what about higher derivatives? Now, here the situation is a bit more tricky um, because the FCZ doesn't mean that there shouldn't be higher derivatives, but FCZ is saying that chi is not independent of the gravity modes. So that action is not compatible with FZZ because in this action I have a kinetic term for the dilaton and I have a kinetic term for the winding mode. So this is not the action I should work with if I want to, <coughs> to accommodate for the uh, FZZ duality. So uh, what I'll show is that uh, at the level of the equation of motions, we can reduce the second order equation of motion that you get from this action into a first order equation of motion that is uh, basically the, uh, if you wish, uh, the low energy, um, the low energy uh, uh, realization of the FCZ duality. So, uh, so let me start with uh, uh, um, pointing out what are the second order equation of motion. So the details of, of course are not important. The age is this uh, GTT component uh, in the metric. And you know, you have a bunch of equations, here are the equations. The only thing that I, I would like to emphasize is that the equation of motion for the winding mode is indeed second order as you could uh, anticipate it from the action. No, no surprises there. Now, uh, li like I said, FZZ is telling us that we should be able to replace this with a first order equation. Now, if you stare at these equations a bit, you see that it will take a miracle for this to happen because these are coupled uh, second order equations. But, uh, but, uh, but it turns out that this is actually the case. Um, I'm not, of course, going to uh, illustrate this here, but you can replace these HP equations with a much simpler set of equations. These are only first order equations. And one can show that every solution to this first order equation is a solution to the HP equations of motion. I have a question. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so you said that the chi is exponential e to the minus the number of action, right? The, the function. At least far away, it should, it should look like that, yes. Yeah, so where is that aspect coming in in the equations of motion here for the chi's? Well, you, this is exactly what I was about uh, to talk about uh, to okay. show. Okay, so it will take me a second. Um, so, so first of all, so j just to be clear, I will from now on, I'll ignore completely the HP equations and I'll stick to these equations, which are, um, <clears throat> sorry, which are, uh, uh, if you will, you know, the, the FZZ version of the HP equations. And this is the answer to, to your question. So that question, that equation guarantees that chi will look like this, not only at infinity, everywhere. And it, it guarantees that this will be the, the case, even when you take into account the, the, the back reaction. So this is an exact statement now. Okay. Sorry, I, I can't see the, it, it's blocked, the, the, the full wave function. It's, it's blocked by your image. By what? By, by my by, image? Yeah. Oh, uh, oops, uh, what can I do about that? I don't, can, can't you move it on your screen? You know, move my image? It's okay for me. It's, it's okay. I, I'm not sure that I, how I can help you. I'm sorry about that. Can't you okay, just yeah, move yeah, it? Yeah, now I got it. Can't yeah. you just, you know, move yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so chi, chi prime is minus h chi. 
So the solution for, for that would be to the minus H. So where is the SNG coming in? Yes, uh, so yes, so, so, uh, uh, so uh, if you, so this is the metric. So basically when you have age, that would be, that would be the Nambugoto uh, action. Okay. Mm -hmm. The age is a Nambugoto action you are saying? Yes. Because you know you have a periodicity of two. I'm not uh, keeping track of two pies and stuff like this. But yes, you this see that the, you know you see that the the, river, the, the uh, um, you know square root of g is age. So what you get here. So when you integrate it, you get exactly the the Nambugoto action. Okay. Okay. And the, the nice thing about that, so, so, so there are two nice things about it. First of all, this is a, a, a correct everywhere, not just asymptotically, not just far from the tip. And it includes uh, the full back reaction of the, uh, of the winding modes. Now, uh, FZZ, or, uh, you know, FZZ is just a, a, a way of saying string theory is in that case, it fixes uh, this constant as well. And we'll talk about this in a second, but uh, that equation, so this set of equation doesn't fix uh, that constant. So what, uh, what we will do, and I'll present uh, this in a second, is that we'll solve this set of equations. We'll solve them numerically. Uh, we'll play with that uh, constant. And we'll see what we get, a bunch of uh, solutions. We'll see that there is a critical point. There is a critical solution. And uh, the interesting thing about all of that is that the critical solution happens exactly at the value that is fixed by FZZ or is fixed by string theory. Okay, so, uh, um, so if you, so I, I if I go back to the complaints about uh, the validity of this set of equations, then I think that uh, the fact that the critical um, behavior that you find for this set of equations, the fact that it happens exactly at the same value that is fixed by uh, string theory, uh, to me is a very uh, strong indication that, uh, you know, maybe it is uh, justified to use these equations uh, um, in spite of the complaints that I was making at the beginning. Um, okay, so uh, so there are various reasons uh, um, that I'm not going to, uh, um, to discuss here why it is easier to solve things uh, uh, numerically when you take a K to infinity and this is what we'll do. And uh, if you do that, uh, this is uh, uh, what you get. So again, I'm, I'm putting here um, the metric just so it will be um, clear. So here we are plotting age as a function of uh, the distance from the horizon. This is uh, uh, the blue line. This is the case. This is without back reaction. This is the usual uh, uh, tip which locally looks like R2. And then uh, here we are plotting uh, uh, different cases. So uh, this guy, the black guy, uh, this is what happens when you approach the critical point from below. When you approach it from below, you see that uh, this is the tip which is this point gets pushed further and further to the left. And you open up a neck that goes down uh, as you uh, keep pushing it to the left. Um, and if you approach the uh, critical point from above, then basically the same happens, but at a certain point, uh, so this, you have a minimum here, that minimum uh, means that you know if you have a, a small hole and then it starts to blow up and you obtain a singularity. 
um, and uh, and you know this dash line is the analytic solution that you have for these equations that is valid uh, for very negative uh, row. And what this is uh, uh, supposed to tell you is that uh, um, if you focus on the numerical uh, uh, um, solution that is the critical one, then it will be eventually uh, glued into this analytic solution. And that analytic solution is such that age goes to zero and its derivative goes to zero. So it is as if uh, there is a puncture at the tip of the cigar. Okay, so um, I hope that this plot is clear. Uh, if not, uh, uh, please ask me because this is, um, you know, a key for, uh, for everything that I want to say. So to make things clear, H row is, as you said, the number go to action, right? Say it again. H row, as you said, was the number go to action, was related to the number go to action? Yes, that's right. So uh, what is row? Row is the... Row is the invariant distance from the tip, from the original tip. So normally it ends at zero. But what happens now is that because of the back reaction, you push the tip further and further to the left and at the critical point it is pushed all the way to infinity so, so it is as if you are, you have a puncture at the tip of the cigar so why should the number go to action be dependent on the row the number go to action is uh, well you you uh, you start at the tip and you integrate all the way to some point. Okay. So let me uh, go back to the, uh, to the picture at the beginning. So this is the tip and the wave function depends on, you know, where you are. Okay. So rho is the invariant distance from the tip and the wave function depends on rho. So oh. if you uh, uh, calculate the number goto of a string that goes all the way to a certain point, it will give you the wave function of this, uh, um, of this string at that point. Okay. Okay, but it, it will be in general a complicated function of the row. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay. so... Uh, so within our uh, numerical accuracy, uh, the critical point is e to the minus gamma over two. Um, and the uncertainties are very, very small. Uh, it's uh, you know, eight or 10 uh, digit after the... So uh, what is uh, uh, remarkable about this uh, number is that this is exactly the value that is fixed by string theory in the large k limit. So if I uh, use this uh, FDZ duality and I calculate that uh, number, then uh, this is what I get. And this calculation is basically the way that you do that calculation is you take some uh, results by Givon and Kutasov and by Teschner from uh, some uh, years back. And you, so they have some expression, you take the large K limit and, uh, and this is what you get. So um, for the experts, I would like just to uh, uh, raise, uh, uh, so, so the, the, the experts might worry how can, so, so this, this works, they uh, basically, what they do is they take advantage of the algebraic structure of the SL2 and they get some expressions. Now, these expressions are, um, uh, since they come from uh, algebraic consideration, it's very uh, hard to, to see how a number like this can appear. And the way this comes about is, is taking uh, into account this 
So, so you, you, they get some bunch of gamma functions. And uh, if you take um, the large scale limit of, uh, of, um, of an expression like this, then you get uh, something uh, which looks like that. And it turns out that you get the exact uh, right uh, factor. So there is, there is a precise match. Now, another comment that I would like to make is that if indeed there is a, a puncture at the tip of the cigar, then uh, the, the puncture uh, removes this uh, index obstruction uh, in relating uh, at least in type 2b, the HP uh, solution with the black hole, uh, which was uh, discussed uh, uh, recently. So this uh, also seem uh, to fit uh, neatly with uh, some uh, issues that were uh, uh, raised recently. Okay, uh, now, uh, Apologize, I have some issues here with the, sorry. Uh, yes, so, um, so another uh, uh, nice observation is that if you uh, calculate uh, at the critical point, the entropy associated with the winding mode, then you get exactly the black hole entropy. Um, oops, what's going on? So, uh, so here is uh, yet another plot. So here I'm plotting, uh, so C is this amplitude divided by the critical amplitude. And I am plotting here the ratio between the uh, entropy in the winding mode, which is given by this expression and the entropy of the black hole. And you see that as you, as you uh, approach from above, uh, from below, uh, sorry, from uh, below the uh, critical point, you get exactly uh, the right, the right answer. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is nice too, and this is the way that the entropy is. Uh, this is the entropy density. So if you look on this expression on the integrand and you uh, plot it, this is the way that uh, it looks like. So most of the entropy, as you can imagine, is at a distance of order one in string units from the place where the there used to be a tip. Okay. Um, so now I would like to argue, so now I would like to, to basically switch to the uh, Laurentian uh, story. And I would uh, Sunny, like- Sunny, I had a question. Yes, so yes. all these, uh, uh, all of the aspects you discussed of the entropy uh, came from the numerics that you uh, performed, right? There were yes. uh, no so analytic- the Ah, yes. Uh, well, there are, I, well, yeah, yes. So, so I can show this one, you can show analytically. I see. But these numbers here, of course, they are numerics. And of course, that plot is, hmm. uh, is numeric. Numeric. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so now I would like to, uh, to argue that basically the information, if I go back to the Lorentzian black hole, uh, that the information uh, escapes the black hole through this, this uh, puncture in the Euclidean uh, um, solution. So it brings, it takes us back to the questions that we uh, started with. So uh, you remember maybe at the beginning we had uh, two questions. I talked about this one. And now I would like to uh, talk about the other uh, question. What happens to the winding mode when we recotate to the uh, Lorentzian uh, black hole? And another question that is uh, very much related to that, and it's uh, in a sense easier to answer, is what happens to the puncture. So if you uh, do, you know, the usual outer locking story, but instead of having a cigar, you have a cigar with a puncture and you uh, analytically continue, then you'll end up with uh, an eternal black hole, but without a future wedge. So this is saying that uh, whatever the analytic continuation, because the puncture was due to the winding mode, then what this is telling us is that what, oops, sorry. Uh, 
uh, what this is telling us is that whatever the analytic continuation of the winding mode is, uh, it should have a really uh, dramatic uh, back reaction on the geometry. It should basically eliminate the future uh, wedge of the eternal black hole. So uh, this means that, you know, that question is an interesting one and that it, it, it you know, it would be nice to uh, be able to to answer it. I have another question. Yes, please. Uh, what happens to the higher massive modes? Because here you have a string which is not uh, very small. It, it is a large string. So the higher massive modes would be uh, not so massive, right? So. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yes. So uh, no, it's actually, it's not. Um, no, no. So the, 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 the thing about Chi and the FZZ is that it's a zero mode. So if you think about uh, the CFT, then this is, it is really a zero mode. So uh, it's not very massive. It's, it's, it looks massive when you think about it. Um, so if you, you, you yeah, so here it's massive in the, in the physical sense because you wind along this direction. This is a large direction, and you uh, and you. Um, no, what I'm saying up, is there could be higher yes. excitations on the string, right? Apart from the zero mode, there could yes. be higher excitations on the string, which would which could carry masses. Oh, you mean excitations of yeah, the, yeah. of the winding mode? Yes. Yeah. So so yes. So so this is a very uh, this is a very good question. I'm not. Uh, I. Uh, um, we can talk about this. I don't uh, think that I have, you know what? Yes, so, so I can say a, a couple of things about that. Um, I'm not sure that now this is the perfect uh, time for it. Uh, um, I, okay, I, just go ahead, just go ahead. No, it's just that it will, uh, technically I'll have to, to uh, uh, I, 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 I prepare some slides about that, but it will take me a while to to find them. So, but maybe uh, uh, towards the end uh, we can uh, talk about this. Okay, sure, uh, sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, yes. So, so in short, the answer is that the winding mode uh, becomes an instant uh, uh, folded string when you uh, analytically uh, continue it. And there are two uh, arguments for this. One uh, uses the exact uh, C, uh, the exact uh, um, uh, CFT structure that we have for this model, and the other one is using an effective field theory. Um, so let's start with the CFT. So from the CFT point of view, there is uh, the key observation is a bunch of works that uh, are, uh, that were done by uh, Giri Bet and Nunes. So uh, what they showed is that um, the non-perturbative effects in the uh, in the SL2 or ADS3 uh, backgrounds they can be um, they can be uh, accounted for by if you think about if this is a winding winding plus and this is winding minus then instead of uh, uh, our chi from before is basically the sum of them. Instead of uh, thinking about chi, you can think about uh, what we call f, which is, uh, which is their product. And what they showed was that if you um, condense this field rather than that field, then you get the exact same answer for all the non-correlation functions in the, um, in this model. Um, so, um, and if you ask yourself, what does it mean from the target space point of view, then, uh, then, the, the, then, the pict then the picture that we get is something like this. So in the Euclidean case, we have a winding plus and winding minus. These are the two uh, arrows here. But when we uh, go, to the Lorentzian section, then we get a folded string like that. And uh, the two basically combine to form a folded string, which is this uh, product here. 
Um, and this folded string is a folded string that fills the entire uh, black hole. And uh, we'll talk about its back reaction uh, uh, in, in a little bit. Okay, so, uh, so, so, so this, is, this is something that you get from using, you know, uh, CFT considerations. And, you know, I can say much more about that, but I, I don't think that I have time for that. But uh, one thing that this uh, brings is, is, is a, a set of questions that I, uh, that I would like to discuss. Because this claim that, you know, you have folded string behind uh, the horizon, uh, it sounds very, very strange because why should there be folded strings? And uh, if there are folded strings, so, the, so all of these things that I didn't describe in details, you know, it relies on algebraic structure of the, um, you know, singlets of the SL2 uh, times SL2 uh, uh, um, algebra and things like that. And, but this is very uh, um, indirect argument and it would be very nice to understand this from a low energy perspective. And if we manage to do that, then we should be able to answer, uh, um, you know, these questions. Uh, uh, first of all, how many folded strings are, are there behind the horizon and what do they do to the black hole interior? So, um, so let's see oh, I'm doing this time. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so what I would like to argue now is from low energy considerations that there are indeed folded string behind the horizon. And um, the starting point is actually is an observation about uh, space-like linear dilatons. So this is a, a two-dimensional uh, linear dilaton. Here is the linear dilaton. And the string coupling blows up um, when R goes to minus infinity. And we know that uh, there are uh, these uh, effects um, that um, we know that Q, we know that Q is uh, shifting a little bit the perturbative uh, physics. So it, it shifts a bit the dimensions and things like that. And this is associated with uh, uh, affecting physics distances of the order of one over Q. Now we care about Q that is small. So this is really affecting things at distances which are much larger than one. Now, uh, but it also leads to non-perturbative non effects. And these non-perturbative effects are a new solutions that appear when Q is not zero, and they were uh, found by uh, Maldacena uh, uh, back in 2005. I'm not going to discuss his motivation for this, I'll just uh, uh, describe them. So the details of the solution is not uh, uh, terribly important for us right now. What is important is to uh, describe how it looks like. So we have, so this is, as we said, the strong coupling, coupling regime. And the folded string uh, starts at, uh, uh, at, at infinity. It goes all the way until a certain point, and then it goes back. And it does so at each, uh, at each time. And as time evolves, the location where it folds is, uh, uh, um, is uh, following this this, this blue line. Now, the nice thing about that solution is that when Q is small, then everything here, the size of this distance is very small. So this process is a local process. And this will be the case even if I don't have, uh, even if I just have locally a linear dilaton. So for example, if I think about this uh, background that we uh, talked about, so again, the solution is not terribly important, but if we stare at the, um, at the Penrose diagram, then I can imagine having a folded string that folds away from the black hole. 
just like here, you see the, fold, the, the string is folding away from the strong coupling. The same happens here. The string folds away from the uh, black hole. It folds toward weak coupling. Um, so these are uh, two solutions that we have. They cost an infinite amount of energy. So if you put them, you must modify the boundary condition. Now, what matters for us is that is, is the question what happens behind the horizon. And behind the horizon, we have at, uh, locally a time-like linear dilaton. So we have something like that. And the analog of the solution, we can write it down, but uh, what is more useful for us is to plot it. And this is how it looks like. We have strong coupling. And now uh, we can uh, uh, imagine coming from strong coupling until a certain point and then going up again. And this is where we fold, just like in the uh, uh, space-like case. So uh, the way or the better way to think about it, if you think uh, uh, from a target space perspective, then at that time, there is nothing. But at a certain time, uh, uh, a, a closed folded string is created. At the beginning, it's very small, but then it gets larger and larger as time uh, uh, goes, uh, it, it becomes uh, really much, much larger. So uh, its energy, its total energy vanishes. And the way it managed to grow is that in that solution, there is negative energy at the fold. Okay, so this is uh, just a, a, a classical solution of an instant folded string. It's instant because it is created at an instant. Before that time, there was no solution. After that time, there is a solution. And what is interesting about it is that it's instant in Lorentzian uh, um, configuration. Namely, there is no tunneling through a Euclidean section which means that the production rate of it is, um, is very large. It is produced uh, classically. Um, so I have a question. Yes. These strings are, you're saying they are infinitely long or something? Eventually they become, well, it depends on uh, how far the singularity is from them, but eventually they become very, very large. Yes. Yeah, so in that case, uh, there would be... Uh, an infinite tower of massive excitations, which are very closely spaced. Apart you from mean, the dilaton and the graviton, there would be a tower of excitations. Uh, wait, uh, so you, you're talking about excitation of these things? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so, so if you, uh, excitations, you're right, but the excitations of these things will not be uh, created classically from the vacuum because they will cost energy. So the only thing that can be created from the vacuum are things that have zero energy. And this is, this is the only configuration that has zero energy. So all these excitations, so for example, if I throw, uh, you know, if I throw a, a, an ordinary string, uh, will it, this guy, it will excite it. But then, you know, this extra standard string is the one that is bringing the energy to that configuration. But if you think about something that is created instantly, then it must have zero energy because there was no energy. Okay. 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 So, uh, so the conclusion from all of that is that uh, here we have uh, many, many uh, folded strings, and. Uh, so we are uh, currently working on calculating the numbers and uh, uh, the distribution from a uh, first principles, but I would like to present uh, three ways how to estimate the total number or to actually calculate the total number uh, using uh, indirect uh, methods. So uh, the first is uh, the back reaction. So, the, so there are two aspects to, to the back reaction. One, is that they should, uh, uh, so the trigger for the, for the instant folded string creation 
is the linear dilaton. So the, the time like linear dilaton. So uh, if the back reaction is uh, strong enough to make it constant, then they will stop, uh, the production will stop. And you can calculate how many of them you need for this to happen. So this is one calculation that you can do. Another calculation that you can do is related to, uh, to what we talked about before. And they have a very uh, unusual energy momentum tensor that you can calculate classically. And that energy momentum tensor uh, violates uh, the ANIC. So in particular, if this is a folded string, and here I try to uh, penetrate it, then because of its back reaction, it will push me a certain uh, distance into the past, and it will also uh, shift the direction. So this is all classical and one can calculate it. Now, what's interesting about them is that the shift back in time is linear with uh, where you eat the folded string. So if you take enough of them, then this shift will be, then, de then delta V will be just equal to V. And, uh, and then, you know, I think that I would follow this trajectory, but actually I will follow that trajectory. And if I'll try to, fo to fall into the folded strings here, I'll get pushed all the way here and then go there. Okay, so then you can ask yourself how many uh, folded strings uh, will make this uh, region uh, imp imp impenetrable. Okay, so this is another question that you can ask. And, uh, and that, that actually, this goes very well with, uh, with the claim that there is a puncture at the tip because as we said, the Lorentzian uh, continuation of a puncture means that you really, this region doesn't exist. So this is exactly that uh, uh, it's related to, to this situation in which I cannot enter this region because in a sense it doesn't exist. Um, so which is what this plot is supposed to tell us. There is another, uh, another uh, way of estimate or of, of calculating the number and it's related to some entropic consideration. I don't have uh, uh, time to uh, discuss the, it but uh, the upshot is that all three ways, they give the exact same answer. It's two pi over K G string squared, where G is the number, is the coupling constant uh, at the horizon. Uh, this you would get, this for this it's sufficient to use a low energy effective action. Here some exact CFT input is needed for this uh, entropy, entropy in quotation mark consideration. But uh, the nice thing is that you get um, the, that we get the exact same, uh, the exact same answer. So uh, my uh, conclusion is that uh, at least in this uh, case in which we have uh, the exact um, CFT, the exact CFT uh, um, um, description in our dispos disposal, uh, well, string theory seems to include a, a drastic uh, uh, modification to GR. Uh, it does so uh, both at the cigar, uh, where the uh, winding mode is pinching or, or creating a puncture at the tip, even for a very large black hole. And the instant for the strings are doing uh, the same at the horizon of the large black hole. And of course, there is much more uh, uh, to learn about this, but it seems like, um, well, there are some concrete, uh, you know, results that are, uh, that seems to support this, uh, this conclusion. So, uh, thank you. Well, let's thank Sunny for a great talk. Thank you, Sunny. So, uh, let's take questions. Mm, I have a question. Uh, 
in the expression for the uh, in the equation of motion for the chi's what is the derivative with respect to which you are taking the derivative what, what is the derivative with respect to rho with respect to rho so rho I'm, okay uh, yes so yes, yes. so you have uh, d chi d rho and on the right hand side you have some complicated function of rho times chi because h is some complicated function of rho right 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 so yes. it, it wouldn't generally exponentiate in a trivial way. That's right, but uh, so the, 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 you're absolutely right. So normally, so let me, uh, yes, yeah, so normally when you have, so this is why, as I said at the beginning, normally something like that is expected to be valid only very, very far from the tip, okay? And, uh, but this equation, sorry for that. Yes, that equation guarantees that this is true everywhere, regardless of what happens to the back reaction. Okay, so this is indeed, and this is maybe the key uh, uh, point in all of this, technically, or maybe also physically. So. And another thing is when you have a puncture at the tip of the Cigar, yes. uh, how do you compute the Nambugoto action if you have a puncture? Well, actually, yes. So this is a very good question because uh, uh, without a puncture, the expression that I wrote, uh, where is it? Sorry. Yes. So this expression for the, um, for the uh, uh, winding, uh, for the entropy of the winding mode, is valid, uh, strictly speaking, only when you have a puncture, only when the topology is that of a cylinder. Okay, you can, what I'm plotting here is what you get for that expression. Um, uh, I'm using it as if it's okay to use it uh, um, regardless of that, but in a sense, you need the puncture. The puncture is what makes this calculation um, uh, valid. And I, I should say it differently. So, so you, you see in string theory, the way things work is that, you know, you know asymptotically what's going on. So in string theory, you fix uh, things at the boundary and then you go in, okay? So what string theory is doing for us is fixing the amplitude at infinity. So it, it's working the other way around. And I start with infinity and then I go in and I see what happens to the, uh, um, so, so are you saying that the puncture uh, on the on the world sheet uh, on the uh, the puncture actually conform conformally maps to a cylinder cylindrical area? Uh, is that what you're saying? Wait, the, the puncture is on in, in the target space. So, so target the space, topology yeah. is not that of a cylinder, but it is that of uh, uh, of uh, um, it's not that of a, a cigar, but that of a cylinder. And this is what is resolving this uh, um, index obstruction that were discussed recently by Shen et al. Okay. Uh, Logo, Logo has a question, I think. Uh, hello, uh, hi. Uh, so I had a, a couple of questions. Um, so uh, the, the slide after the slide, um, if you could go to the yeah, um, so there is this. So this this shows that there is a there's a peak at the at the Beckenstein Hawking entropy that the in somehow the winding entropy peaks at the like like how do I understand this graph? Um, oh yeah, I, maybe I yeah yeah I think that I understand. So this graph is a bit confusing. So what is being plotted here? It, so, so if I go back, then I'm talking really about the point. I'm plotting this point, okay? Mm -hmm. And that point, we know that the integral is uh, the integral divided by the uh, Bekenstein uh, Hawking uh, entropy is one. Okay, so mm -hmm. I normalize uh, the plot in such a way that the integral is one. And once you do that, this is the shape that you get. So this is telling you where most of the entropy is. Okay, so you see that at the puncture, there is very little entropy. At infinity, there is very little entropy. Most of the entropy 
is at a distance of order one from where the tip, you know, used to be before a string theory uh, started to, to, to play a role. So this is order one in what units? This is a, a like oh, horizon. In string or, units, I'm sorry. In string, in string units. units, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Okay, good. So, so, so then uh, I, I had another question, which is about this Lorenzian picture that you were describing at the end of the talk. Yes. Um, so, uh, there, what was the size supp supposed to be? So, you had this uh, region inside which you remove uh, from the interior. Um, like, um, so, so this uh, uh, from your uh, Penrose diagram and kind of things, it seems like it's expanding. Uh, it's it, it's uh, uh, but uh, like like from just from the Lorenzian point of view, like how is this expansion thought about? Like uh, yes. how do I understand the rate of this expansion, for example? Yes. Um, so uh, uh, yes. So, so the claim is, um, and needless to say that you know it's it's claim, and uh, there are many things that we still uh, uh, don't uh, know. The claim is the following. If you uh, analytically continue the winding modes, then uh, in the Lorentzian case, instead of talking about winding plus and winding minus, it's better to talk about the product uh, and, the, and their product gives you a folded string. Now that folded string has a tail, has a, a, a quantum mechanical tail that goes outside the horizon. But behind the horizon, it's just classically there. So you have lots of uh, folded strings there and you have so many of them and their back reaction is so unusual. I didn't have time to discuss in detail uh, the, the back reaction, but it's really unusual. And it all goes back to the fact that they are created instantly. And their back reaction is such that you really, that if you have, actually, I have a picture here that is, might be a bit useful. Yes, so this picture, their back reaction is such that they can basically uh, make a region go away. So you think that you would, you know, if this is the horizon, you think that you would cross the horizon, but their back reaction is such that, you know, they can make this region uh, um, impenetrable. Uh, and this is consistent with uh, uh, with the uh, with what we found that uh, uh, the back reaction of the winding mode seems to create a puncture. At the at the right um, at the right amplitude. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, one more question. So um, uh, this is somewhat uh, tangential, but um, like this particular region that you're talking about inside the black hole, uh, does it have to do anything with you know like these islands and so on that people talk about? Ah, very good, very good, very good, very good. So yes, so so the hope is that uh, so yeah so the island and all of these are um, yeah, actually thanks for the question i should have uh, forgot to, to talk about that uh, yeah so the islands and uh, all of that are so the way that people uh, understand it is from um, well it is the way that i uh, view their understanding is that you know you you have a macroscopic understanding of the island which is coming from this extra a Euclidean saddle point. And the hope is uh, that uh, the instant folded strings could give a, a microscopic description of this macroscopic uh, feature. So uh, I think that uh, the two uh, ultimately must be uh, related and, uh, uh, but to understand that, you know, one needs to go, you know, much further than, uh, uh, you know the, what what I described you, but I, I think that they are related. I, so yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. I have another question. Uh, the point is when you are saying that the folded strings back react, the you mean that they interact with the other fields in the uh, space, right? Yes, with the dilaton and the metal. Yeah. 
so now when the folded strings back react doesn't it mean that essentially their higher excitations will also get excited because otherwise how can they back react um yes so so uh, wait uh, uh, wait so uh, why is that uh, the case so can't uh, something in the ground state back react on the geometry so if i have you know uh, no, so, so it's a string. Back yeah. What so I'm talking about, it's a string. So it will, in general, bubble. So it will have excitations on it. That's right. But uh, yeah, that's right. So very good. I, actually, it's related to the previous question because the, what, what we are, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so the only thing that I, I discussed so far are basically singlets of the uh, are basically singlets of the SL2. Okay, because everything uh, um, it's it's all related to the it's also related to this excitation uh, that we had at the beginning of the talk. Everything that I talked about the power of the exact CFT and the reason why everything works so neatly. Uh, ultimately, it comes from the um, from the fact that I used uh, secretly or openly the uh, the SL2 structure and I looked for singlets of the SL2, SL2 left times SL2 right. Okay, what you are asking about is something is what can I do better, how can I do better? And, and I think that we can, and I don't know if, so maybe uh, if, if it's okay, I can show some uh, slides about, I think that I have them. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hopefully, not this one, yes. So yes, so so uh, here, uh, uh, so this is maybe not exactly the uh, the question that you ask, but it is very much related to it because so here uh, what I'm showing so this is the Lorentzian black hole, and we are uh, you know doing this uh, tortoise uh, um, presentations uh, 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 potential so the horizon is here. The boundary is at infinity, and one of the differences compared to what you are used to in Schwarzschild is that uh, at infinity you go to a constant rather than a fall back to zero. So now, in this case, there are two uh, uh, so two type of excitations. One, you know, this is the purple line, and it goes, you know, above this barrier and it escapes from the horizon to infinity. And the other one is doing that, you know, you hit the boundary and you fall back. So th these are related to what people uh, used to call uh, in black hole, you know, these are excitations that live in the black hole, the atmosphere or things like that. So they look, uh, so, so this is continuous and this is continuous, of course, but from the uh, SL2 point of view, they are very, very different. So this, these excitations, they are continuous also in the sense that they sit in the continuous representation of uh, SL2, but this continuous spectrum actually sits in the discrete representation of SL2. And this is very important because uh, um, uh, the FZZ duality, it's basically, it follows uh, uh, and uh, this is something that uh, uh, David uh, Kutasov, uh, Amit Givon, and I showed, is that you can think about the SL2, the FCZ duality as following from this observation due to Maldusena and Duguri about uh, how spectral flow connect states in, in ADS3. And this happens when they sit in the, in the discrete representation. So what this is saying is that you think that you excite only this classical mode. So here I have some particle that, you know, is living outside the black hole, but that particle is accompanied by an excitation of the string. So what you really have, this is what, you, this is, this line is basically that line. This is the classical, oops, this is the classical trajectory. But once you have a particle that is doing that, then you also excite the, the folded string. And you can actually write down exactly what is the vertex operator. So the, the, the relation between this and that 
is you, you can write it down exactly using the uh, SL2. Uh, so this is partially uh, um, an answer to what uh, you, you asked, I think. Now, of course, I don't know how to calculate the back reaction of such a creature. Okay, and um, but I, I at least I can identify it. Yes. Uh, Ms. Penta has a question. Yes, I I, I have a question, uh, Sunny. Uh, so it's a it's a confusion actually. So I mean, when you have a Lorenzian black hole, then we continue it uh, into Euclidean signature, and of course there is no horizon then. Uh, and now, my question is uh, that suppose there is a holographic dual that we are working with, let us say, n equal to four super yard mills or whatever. Now, uh, if I have a finite temperature field theory, then a natural order parameter is the Polyakov line. And in a sense, it's this Polyakov line that is uh, becoming the winding modes of the string. Right. 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 But uh, if I just look in, in the language of quantum field theory, I don't know how to really understand the Polyakov line in a Lorenzian framework, actually. I mean, that order parameter, I don't know how to. I mean, I, I would I would understand how to and how to uh, yes, discuss yes, yes, uh, yes. finite temperature field theory uh, in a Lorentzian setup by looking at correlation functions at long times and pulling out the temperature, etc. But this particular order parameter, I I have at least I have no idea actually how to understand it in the Lorentzian quantum field theory. You have so so I that? don't I, I don't know either. <laughs> but what I can tell you, uh, uh, yes. So, so basically, the way I would uh, translate your question is that uh, I, I think that uh, uh, from the bulk point of view, so so uh, like uh, so yes. So so we have two things. We have one is the winding mode, which is a bulk thing, and then you say, well, in ADS, we also know that. Um, uh, we have this uh, uh, Polyakov loop. So I think that from the bulk point of view, uh, it's very likely that also in ADS5, um, a folded string is the creature that is relevant for the uh, um, analytic continuation of the, uh, of the winding mode. But I don't, know how, how to identify it on the boundary. What I can tell you is that in ADS3, we do know, and this is this is this uh, beautiful work by uh, Giribet and Nunes. Well, they didn't talk about folded strings, but what they did was to identify uh, a non-perturbative, uh, um, um, well, you have, so basically what they did there was to say, Okay, so I have, uh, we have the usual singlet of uh, SL2 left times SL2 right, but look, here is another one. Okay, and that other one, this is uh, basically the mode that is relevant for um, in the AD, ADS3 case. And I think that before trying to answer your question, maybe, uh, uh, you know, a, a simpler question is to try and think what this uh, operator means from the boundary CFT of ADS3. Um, and I think that there, there must be an answer. Um, uh, and it might be uh, uh, helpful for your question, which is the, the real question, so, which I don't know how to answer. <laughs> yes. Are there any other questions for Sunny? Well, okay, not uh, let's thank Sunny again for a great talk.
thanks for having me. Yeah. Bye, guys. Pleasure. Yeah, see you. I'll end the call. <laughs>